A startup that was launched by two college students has just delivered combat drones to the Indian Army, and they did this in just three months. And this innovation isn't coming from a defense giant or a decades-old tech firm. It's Apollyon Dynamics, a startup that was born at the Bits Balani Hyderabad campus, founded by Jayant Katri and Surya Choudhury. Welcome to our weekly Indian startup news show. I'm Caleb Friesen, your host, and you're watching Backstage with Millionaires. And before we dive into it, this channel is part of the Zero One Network. Okay, now getting back into it, according to an official update here, the startup delivered indigenous unmanned aerial vehicles or UAVs to Indian Army units stationed in Jammu, Chandimandir, Panagar, and Arunachal Pradesh. Now, one interesting thing about this drone company, Apollyon Dynamics, is that they also train army personnel. So even soldiers who don't really have a lot of drone flying experience can learn to operate these drones quickly and effectively. And the founders recently showcased their technology at the Pilani campus in front of of none other than Kumar Mangalam Birla, uh, the chancellor of Bitspalani and the chairman of the Aditya Birla group. Now, Apollyon's drone lineup includes long-range surveillance units, payload delivery vehicles, and kamikaze drones. These are single-use attack drones designed for high-precision missions. And one of their kamikaze drones can hit speeds of over 300 kilometers per hour while carrying up to one kilogram of payload. And they're not stopping here because the team is also working on next-generation systems, including vertical takeoff and landing drones and fixed-wing platforms too. All right, next up in the news, Blinkit isn't just delivering your groceries in 10 minutes anymore. In fact, they're now trying to save lives as well. Earlier this year, Blinkit quietly launched a 10-minute ambulance service in Gurugram. And now, Dipinder Goyal, the founder of Eternal and the company that owns Blinkit and Zomato, well, he's saying that they're ready to take things even further. The next big step is to build an in-house paramedic training program aimed at raising the standard for emergency care across India. So let's break down how far they've already come here. Their 10-minute ambulance service was launched in January of 2025 with just five ambulances covering a small patch around Golf Course Road. But today, that number has more than doubled to 12 ambulances operating from six depots and covering nearly half of Gurugram. They've responded to 594 emergency calls so far. 50% of those were critical. In 83% of cases, they managed to reach the patient in under 10 minutes. And each ambulance comes equipped with life-saving tools, including oxygen cylinders, AEDs, or automated external defibrillators, and emergency meds. And they're also staffed by a paramedic, an assistant, and a trained driver. Now, they're charging a flat fee of 2,000 rupees per call for this service, but profit, according to the Goyal isn't the goal here. He called it one of the hardest and most resource intensive challenges that they've ever taken up as a company, but also one that they're fully committed to as well. So why is this service even needed in the first place? Well, Dipinder Goyal says that even in life-threatening situations, many people still hesitate to call an ambulance. Why? Well, because they don't really trust that it's going to arrive on time, and that's exactly what Blinkit wants to change. But speed is just one part of this puzzle. To ensure high-quality care, the team is now developing a full-fledged paramedic training program. The goal here is to build a new generation of first responders who aren't just medically trained, but are also capable of providing care with empathy during people's most vulnerable moments. All right, next up in the news, it's official. We have a dead unicorn here. The Good Glam Group, once valued at $1.2 billion, is being broken up and sold off piece by piece. The founder of the company, Darpan Sangfi, confirmed in a LinkedIn post that lenders have decided to enforce their charge on the company's brands. This means that each brand is now going to be sold individually and the group will no longer operate as a unified company. Now, this isn't really a sudden move. It's the final outcome after months of trying to keep things together. Back in January, the company brought in restructuring expert Arjun Vedyanathan. Arjun's task was to bring spending under control and also find a path forward. And as part Part of that plan, Good Glam sold off some of its biggest assets, brands like Sirona, Scoop Whoop, and Miss Malini. 
But these efforts weren't enough. The restructuring just didn't really come together in time and lenders have now taken over. Darpan had some pretty bold ambitions. He wanted to build a digital first FMCG conglomerate and take it public in a $10 billion IPO by 2023. But a series of acquisitions didn't deliver the expected returns and the business began to unravel. And today only four brands remain under the group, MyGlam, MomsCo, Organic Harvest, and Saint Botanica. But but even those are now up for sale, with each expected to end up under a different owner. Darpan says that the sale process should wrap up in the next 60 days or so, and in the meantime, he's setting up a good glam restitution fund to clear pending dues for employees, vendors, and shareholders. And if the brand sales or future owners can't cover employee dues, then Darpan has made a personal commitment, 25% of his post-tax salary or equity gains from any future venture will go towards paying employees back no matter how long it takes. All right, next up in the news, exactly one year after the massive Was Your X hack, where hackers got away with $235 million in crypto, another Indian exchange has been hit, and this time it's CoinDCX. And while the scale is smaller here, the breach is still pretty serious. Around $44 million worth of crypto has been stolen, making it one of the biggest Indian crypto hacks since Wazir X. And it all started on the night of July 19th. A blockchain investigator named Zach XBT noticed some unusual transactions from wallets linked to CoinDCX. He posted about it online, saying that the exchange might have been drained, but CoinDCX didn't respond publicly until several hours later. So what happened here? Well, it looks like hackers managed to break into one of CoinDCX's internal operational accounts. This wallet wasn't connected to customer deposits. It was used by the company to move funds around for liquidity on a partner exchange. And so in other words, it was part of CoinDCX's own treasury. That's why even though $44 million were stolen, no customer funds were touched. And CoinDCX has said it will absorb the full loss itself and all user withdrawals and trading remain active. Right now, a full investigation is underway. CoinDCX is working with cybersecurity firms like Signia and Seal911, uh, along with CERT IN, India's cyber response team. And to recover the stolen crypto, CoinDCX has launched a Web3 bug bounty, offering up to 25% of any recovered funds as a reward to ethical hackers and security researchers. All right, now let's move into some quick news items here. First of all, Reliance has just launched a Geo Rush, a new fashion quick commerce service that promises four-hour delivery in six major cities. Uh, also, Mintra is in trouble with the Enforcement Directorate, which claims that the company broke India's foreign investment rules by disguising retail sales as wholesale business, allegedly involving over 1,600 crore rupees. And Mintra is saying that they haven't received the complaint yet, but they're ready to cooperate. And then Paytm has posted its first ever quarterly profit of 123 crore rupees in Q1 of FY26, thanks to cost cutting and improved operational efficiency. Okay, so just like last week, I asked you all what you had built this week, and many of you did reply. So here are my three favorite picks from this week. First of all, we have this Anki flashcard maker built by Raj. This is a browser extension which automatically creates Anki flashcards using AI while you are reading articles online. And these cards are built around key points from what you're reading. They can also use a technique called spaced repetition to help you remember Remember the information over time. Next, we have Final Run made by Ashish and Arnold. Uh, this tool uses AI to test mobile apps without needing any code. You just describe what you want to test in plain English, and the AI understands your app like a human would and then creates the tests for you. And it saves time and makes testing way easier, especially for apps with lots of users. And then finally, we have Select, an AI hiring tool designed to make recruiting faster. It was built by Rahul, and basically what Select does is it reads through through job applications and then matches the right candidates to the right jobs and also gives feedback. And all of this is done automatically. And they're calling it an AI hiring engine. So now let's move into the funding news segment for today's video. This week, Indian startups raised a total of $61 million. It's quite a bit less than last week's $86 million. It is also below the trend line for the third week in a row. But let's take a look at some of the companies that raised funds this week. And the first one I want to talk about here is Thiruvananthapuram-based semiconductor startup Netrasemi. 
So they're building a smart chips for small gadgets like cameras, drones, and sensors. And instead of sending data to the cloud, their chips can run AI directly on the device, making things faster, more secure, and energy efficient. And they raised 107 crore rupees. That's $12.5 million in their Series A round. Then after that, we have Mumbai-based startup Enlight, which is helping to make big buildings and facilities much smarter and greener using tech. So instead of installing complicated HVAC and energy systems, Enlight plugs in small wireless sensors and smart AI-managed controls to existing setups. So their system automatically adjusts things like air conditioning, lighting, and equipment based on real-time data. Data like, for example, occupancy or weather or device performance. And they've raised 46 crore that's $5.32 million in their Series A round. Following that, we have Bengaluru-based iTouring.ai, which helps big companies, especially in banking and insurance, use AI without needing to write code or build everything themselves. Their main platform, also called iTouring, lets teams automate tasks like cleaning data, building models, and managing AI all in one dashboard. And it also explains how each model works, keeps them audit ready, and alerts if performance drops. And they've raised $5 million in their Series A round. Next, we have Genai based space tech startup Inbound Aerospace. They're building little autonomous spacecraft that can go up into space, do experiments, and then come back all without a crew. And their main product is a reusable re-entry vehicle, basically a mini space capsule. Scientists can send it up for experiments like testing how seeds grow or manufacturing materials in weightlessness, and then bring it back home safely. So instead of waiting two to four years for a turn on the ISS, labs can use Inbound bound spacecraft to send and retrieve experiments faster, cheaper, and on demand, and they've raised $1 million in their pre-seed round. And then finally, we have another Chennai-based startup called Plenome Technologies. They're building secure AI-powered systems for hospitals and public services using blockchain. So instead of scattered medical records or shady organ donation systems, Plenome brings everything into one transparent tamper-proof platform. Their tools include a doctor's note-taking assistant, a secure OPD app, and even a blockchain-powered organ transplant system. And they've raised 6.5 crore rupees. That's about $750,000 in their seed round. All right, that is all the Indian startup news that I have for you all this week. I'm Caleb Friesen, and this has been Backstage with Millionaires. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.